Perfect. So as we launch into to Digital Academy today, uh, one of the things that I'm gonna ask you guys to do is think of a business. Uh, think of a business that you're working with right now. They're a current active advertiser, um, and I mean that in even if they're on a paused campaign. I want you to think through one advertiser. It can either be your best advertiser, uh, your most difficult advertiser, maybe it's an advertiser um, that you have been trying to talk to you about a new website. Um, maybe it's somebody that you're dealing with uh, with an agency. Um, or it could be a business that you go, I think I've tapped out. I think I have uh, gotten every type of product out of them that I'm going to get. And, and they're, they're resistant to change. Um, think about who these clients are. It, it, you can pick a client for any reason. And what I'd like for you guys to do is put your client that you've decided on in the chat box. Uh, because we're going to come back to that in a little bit. But I would like everybody as I go through what today's agenda is going to be um, to think through who is that customer and go ahead and, and show us who that is in the chat box. Um, so today what we're going to talk through are global trends. Uh, we're going to look at online behavior and the different marketing impacts that we're seeing from these consumer behaviors across the, the digital landscape. We're gonna take a look at Google's own marketing tactics. What are some of the changes that they've made? Uh, they're a digital company, they're a powerhouse. We look to them first, um, but what do they do behind the scenes when they're marketing Android devices or they're talking about YouTube? So we're gonna take a look at that. We're gonna talk about user experience of your customers, consumers, and how that plays an impact in their ability to convert marketing and then we're going to also look at some social distancing impacts and trends that we're seeing on. And then as we wrap up today, we're going to issue a challenge to each of you. Um, so sit back, relax, enjoy. Please ask questions in the chat box as they come up. Um, I'm not going to see them, but Connor is helping out today. He's a project manager that we have for our top 25 accounts out of Nashville. And he's going to help man the chat for us and let us know what your questions are. Um, so please be interactive and uh, enjoy what we're going to talk about today. So before we get started into a lot of data, what we're going to do is a little bit of an icebreaker. These are five things we bet you didn't know about digital ad history. So the first thing that we're going to look at is AdWords. So go ahead and put in the chat box, what do you think the first item was? that was launched with an AdWords campaign. And let's see what some of those, those thoughts are. It can be wild, it can be crazy, it can be simple. What do you think the first advertisement was on Google? Let's see what people are saying. A dentist, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, I like that. Great answers. Nike, that's a good one, Andrea. Big brands. Pizza, very good. None of those are right though, folks. Unfortunately uh, for you all, the very first ad that launched on AdWords was actually Lobsters. It was 2000 and AdWords turned advertising on its head. Uh, they did a low key launch promoting a self-service platform and essentially there was a link that said, see your ad here and it went to a very small percentage of google users so the engineers launched this program they sat back and they waited and within a half an hour before their very eyes the very first advertisement appeared on google and it said live lobsters by mail order and that was the big launch for a small business advertising themselves on google another fun fact that you may not know is that youtube started as a dating site in 2005, Chad Hurley, Steve Chen, Jawad Kareem, they developed a site where they wanted people who are seeking love to share videos, to describe their perfect partner. Who did they want to be their mate? And luckily for us, they thought again, and they turned it into the platform that we all know, love, and use today. But there's still a little bit of a romantic twist. YouTube actually launched on Valentine's. Another fun fact that you may not know is that Kim Kardashian, is not the first person to break the internet. If you thought that, you would be wrong. On October 14th, 2012, Felix Baumgartner jumped out of a balloon from the edge of space. Nine and a half million people watched 
this live stream on the internet, on YouTube. It made it the most watched live stream ever and it devoured one seventh of the entire world's internet bandwidth and crashed the internet. Next is an advertising campaign that you may not know about. British fashion house Burberry let people send real kisses to each other. They uh, launched this campaign and essentially what you did is you put a kiss on the touch screen of your phone. Uh, you, you put your mouth up to it, you kissed it, your phone captured the image and then you were able to uh, add that message. You could add lip color to it and put your name on it and send it to individuals in your household. Uh, so essentially what you were able to do is send a kiss across the world to whoever you wanted. It was innovative and it was a new way for them to market uh, and engage their current audience and capture a new audience altogether. And then our last fun fact uh, kind of leads us into the search realm, if you will, and smartphones and on demand uh, wanting uh, information right now. And that is in 2016 River Island, uh, which is a fashion brand out of the UK, they became the first brand to reach shoppers doing mobile research near their stores. And they used Google's local inventory ads to do this. Essentially, uh, consumers were treated to this locally stocked ability to check, what do my local storefronts have? They landed on a page and they could see availability of products in the nearest stores to them. Uh, it introduced them to being able to peer into windows of a store without actually having to be present. And although it may feel like we've had this ability for a long time, it's only been a few short years where local storefronts have been able to show us what inventory we have and for us to be able to check that inventory and immediately make a purchase. So that kind of leads us into our global trends. So that last uh, tidbit that we talked about was 2016. So as we go into global trends, we're really going to explore what are individuals doing right now? What are demographics doing? Uh, does that play a role in usage? And what are the different platforms and how are those trends changing over the last few years? So the first one that we're going to talk about is uh, Google. The, these are some polls. Uh, Google released a consumer barometer study uh, two years ago. So in 2017, they essentially did a four year trend study of consumers all across the globe. And what they found based on polling consumers and looking at their internet habits um, are some different statistics and data that we're gonna go through. Um, if you look at, at some of these graphs, one of the points that I wanna to really call out here is the growth of internet access has just been staggering. Um, not only do we have, does everyone have very easy access across the United States to get internet, um, but hundreds of millions of new internet users have come onto the scene. 80% uh, of consumers are now internet users for personal purposes, which years ago, and it really wasn't that long ago, 10 years ago, even five years ago, uh, the majority of our use around computers and technology had to do with work preferences versus personal preferences. Um, and if that number of 80% doesn't surprise you, what's, what's really powerful about that statistic is that's up 72% from four years prior. So it has actually been a very short time that our adoption has happened. Um, it's happened very quickly and it's happened globally. And I think that's what's so powerful about how digital media is bringing everyone together because it's really taking down a lot of socioeconomic borders um, that previously existed. So if you look at the graph in the top left corner, what you'll notice is that's, a, that's around how often you access the internet for personal reasons. And what's really, I think, important about this is not just the growth line showing that several times a day, uh, nearly 60% are, are accessing the internet several times a day. It's the drop off of people who only access the internet once a day or less, or even never. That number is eroding rapidly and is just going to continue to accelerate downward. Um, if you go to the bottom left corner, What's also very interesting is the internet's used by all different age groups. So, so you'll notice that 55 plus age group, 75% of those users are on the internet daily. And that's a really powerful number. So sometimes uh, what you hear from our customers that we're out in the field talking to is my demographic isn't online or they're not using the internet as much. And that's just not true nowadays. Um, if you go to the bottom right corner, what you'll see 
or those statistics on the internet's the very first place that I look for information. Um, that is powerful. Across all age groups, over 70% are going online to find information about services that are offered. They're trying to look up content and information about something going on in their daily lives. Maybe it's a medical reason, um, but information's being consumed and answers are being looked for on a daily basis across all of these different demographic groups. And I think that's so powerful for us to concentrate on. One of the biggest accelerations of those numbers is the usage of smartphones. Um, and the adoption and the rise in that usage. In 2012, one in three consumers access, had access to a smartphone. Just four years later, that number rose to 70%, which is just huge. Smartphones have become a part of our everyday life and research is showing that it's happening across all markets across the world. In the United States, 72% of uh, adults in the United States have access to a smartphone that they're using on a daily basis. Um, and what's very interesting is the growth across smartphones um, has been across all demographics as well. And I think that's, that's even more powerful that we're not just having to concentrate on one group. And it's not just a younger generation. Everyone's using uh, different technological devices to access information on a global level. Smartphone adoption, you can see, doubled in four years in that top left corner. Um, but what I find really interesting is the bottom left. It says, it's not just that we've stopped using commuters, it's an age thing. So although older demographics are using smartphones, you can see uh, that they're still using desktops. Uh, they're still using uh, tablet devices. Uh, that is a more comfortable feel. So the repetitive nature of using a smartphone is much higher as your, your main means of technology for 35 and under group than it is for your 55 and over group, which I think is important for us to know as we talk about who we're marketing to and the different tactics that we use and the different creative messaging, we have to make sure we're making that connectivity. We need to make sure that we're really analyzing the consumers of our clients and understanding which platforms they're consuming media across so that we're putting the message in the place that's gonna resonate with them the most. Another interesting area that we're gonna talk about is the usage of multiple screens. So we get a lot of questions about this and we have to talk to our clients about this story um, that is so powerful. So smartphones are taking over laptops as a primary device for going online. Um, but simultaneously, consumers around the world are acquiring more and more internet connected devices, uh, leading us to this multi-screen world that we now live in. And you all probably experience this on a daily basis. You probably sit in front of the TV, much like 58% of uh, other internet users. And while you're watching TV or it's playing in the background, you're also going online. Maybe you're pulling up your laptop or tablet or your smartphone but oftentimes we're on multiple devices throughout the day. Um, and also wearables and the adoption of wearables is increasing. You can see the US, um, it's less than 10%, but that's still a very strong number. And as we think about different products and we think about places that our clients need to be, these are some of the areas that we really need to think through. As devices get smaller and smaller, that is going to trigger uh, things like voice command and searches by voice and how are we preparing our customers to be ready for that? So it's not just about being on multiple screens. It's about being on all types of devices, but in a way that resonates and makes sense for our clients. So if we're updating their listing directories or if a client says, well, I'm already on Google Maps. Isn't that enough? Part of our conversation needs to be, well, have you set up your Apple Maps? Are you set up so that if somebody does a search using Siri uh, on their Apple Watch, are you readily able to be found? If not, we need to talk about listings being in more places than just Google. We need to talk about how voice activation is important and all these different screens and all these different types of technology are an important part of how consumers operate now. And we need to prepare for that and be ready for that for our customers. It's probably been a long time since you've seen an old fashioned alarm clock. If you're like me, the first thing you probably do in the morning is hit the snooze button on your cell phone. 
Uh, that is definitely my primary alarm clock, which I, I find very interesting. Um, but this just backs up smartphones. This backs up mobile experience. And the reason we have these statistics up here is because we want to make sure that as we speak to our, our customers, they understand that we need to insert our marketing messages in front of users while they're living their day-to-day -day lives. And that is device specific at times. Uh, so you can see that we also have on here that smartphones are the preferred camera for all age groups. So the majority of you are probably not walking around with a digital camera or a Kodak disposable in your pocket. You're probably using your smartphone most of the time. Uh, same thing with music. The majority of you probably stream music uh, outside of traditional radio. You're probably screen, or, uh, streaming through Spotify or Pandora or Apple Music. You're in line with more than 60% of the population who's over 25 years or, or older. And you can see there from that statistic at the bottom, 63% of smartphone users under 25 say that that's the primary way that they listen to music. So think about that as some of you are putting together education campaigns. You're trying to target high schoolers and move them into an undergraduate program, or you're targeting undergraduate college students for uh, college apparel, SEC apparel. Maybe you're targeting them because you want them to go to certain games or events or master's programs. All of those uh, different statistics that are on here are ways that we have to be prepared to reach customers and understand how they're, they're traveling now and how they're consuming. Uh, even if we don't consider it media, it doesn't mean that there's not a place that we need to insert ourselves as we're thinking about marketing campaigns. So what is the user impact on marketing? I think that's such an important question to think through. As times change, how does that lead to how we have to pivot business for our customers? Well, new smart devices are consistently emerging. And we talked about that on that last slide. We talked about uh, our different types of watch or wearable devices. Uh, consumers are embracing, the, embracing this way to interact. So you can see here voice commands, 20% of searches are now by voice. That's so powerful. Uh, this number is gonna just continue to multiply over and over. One of the statistics that we saw recently was that almost 40% of our searches are gonna be uh, voice activated by the end of this year. That's a huge number and it'll be really exciting to see if we're there. But again, when we talk about programs like listings, this is an avenue that makes us a little bit different. Are we setting up our customers in all of the right places that they need to be? In addition to that, you can see on the right, smartphone owners turn to search first. So getting people prepared. So it's listings, it's blogs, it's making sure that their website's updated. We also need to make sure that our clients are being helpful, but that they're being fast. Consumer expectation is that brands continue to rise, but when those expectations are exceeded, the rewards and sales and loyalty are, are just tenfold. So what we need to do is make sure that brands are really adopting um, what consumers are expecting from them. So you can see every second delay in a mobile page load, conversions fall by up to 20%. This is huge. When we talk about using the grader and we talk about scanning our clients' websites before we go in uh, to help them with marketing decisions, one of the reasons that we really need to understand what's happening with a website is that also impacts our marketing. If we're sending consumers through advertising to a website that pages just aren't loading on, that is creating a deficit in our campaigns for our clients. We need to really make sure that we're paying attention to speed on mobile and desktop devices and that we're coaching our customers on how to improve that speed um, and bring down the blocks of consumers being able to convert on their site. And blocks would be page load times not being sufficient and consumers evacuating the website because they're frustrated about that. You can see that 91% of smartphone owners purchased or plan to purchase something after they saw an ad they described as relevant. That's a powerful statistic that you can use in all of your digital marketing moving forward. And the consumer journey is no longer linear. And you all know this, we talk about it often. It doesn't look like a straight funnel from brand awareness all the way through loyalty. People are coming in at different phases now. 
um, but all of the different tactics, online and offline strategies, whether it's digital marketing or it's traditional media, um, they need to all move seamlessly together. We need to make sure that as we're working with our customers, we're not saying don't do TV. We're not saying don't do radio or don't do billboards. What we need to make sure is that we have consistent messaging and that we have a good experience across all of our marketing mediums and that they all tie together in different ways. Uh, so some of these stats, I'm not gonna go through them all. These are great to talk through how you can help your customers understand what does that journey really look like? Some of these I absolutely love, like consumers who click on a Google search ad prior to visiting a store, on average spend 10% more. That's a great testimony for us to, to not only tell our customers who are running paid search campaigns or, or listings uh, campaigns, but do we see that same data? Are we, are we asking our customers when they convert, is the quality better? Are the sales up? And if they're not, how do we help them with that? How do we focus on those service lines or those products that are gonna drive higher price points per sale and higher margins for them? And let's talk about Google. So I mentioned this at the beginning, a little inside uh, detail on Google marketing. So Google's uh, global marketing CMO, I talked about they, they were launching uh, an Android device and this was a global campaign. Um, but in years prior, and as they looked over how they market, there's really seven different channels within Google that they, they spend a lot of emphasis around. And the first channel mix is at the top. And you can see in light blue, the majority of their marketing was spent in traditional TV. It was spent across broadcast, um, but they made a shift. They decided to make a change. And when they rolled out their, their Android devices, the media mix looked a lot different. You can see from the bottom, 37% of their media mix went on YouTube. 37% um, ended up being on traditional TV. Another 12% was on OLV. Um, that's your online video. So that could be uh, other pre-roll avenues, but the majority of that was actually streaming. Uh, social media, radio, print, and out of home were also included in their campaign. So global uh, marketing and for an internet company like Google, you can see they still believe in a healthy mix. Now they also believe in digital first. Um, and one of the things that they wanted to look at was, does this marketing mix work? does this actually drive the same results as a TV heavy 70% campaign? Well, the answer ended up being yes. Um, they actually saw more breadth with the new digital first media mix. Uh, one of the things that they looked at was that they were able to reach more adults that were between the ages of 18 and 29 than they were with the TV campaign. Um, but they also reported that they were able to reach audiences 18 to 49 was 36% higher on YouTube than it was on TV. So that was something that they needed to take into account and they're continuing to monitor. What's also interesting is they don't say, hey, this is what we need to do for everyone. The CMO is very clear at pointing out, YouTube skews younger. Um, it does deliver at scale, but ages vary, demographics vary, and therefore your marketing mix must vary. One of the key points that he made is that they're constantly evaluating demographics and the different tactics within those demographics. Not all consumers uh, look at marketing in the same way. They're not consuming in the same way. Therefore, our tactics and our platforms and even the creative messaging needs to vary depending on the groups that we want to expose the message to and interact with. This doesn't mean don't use YouTube to market to individuals who are over the age of 35. What it means is we have to evaluate and we need to look at what's the vertical and what's happening in our individual markets, what's happening regionally and what's happening with these different groups and platforms. It's not a one size fits all answer and even Google knows that and they change their marketing up because of that. And that also leads us into user experience. User experience is so important. If we're not concentrating on this and we're not advising our customers on this, we're actually uh, pushing a deficit to them. We need to really make sure that we're talking about user experience uh, across the board. And what we're seeing 
is that, and it's new research that's out now on Think with Google, and this is a 2019 study that was released, and it's that consumers care about mobile speed and usability, however they feel that businesses are failing to meet their expectations. Consumers are saying that they want fast and easy to use mobile experiences, and that demand is higher than ever. They, as users continue to rise more and more, what we need to make sure is that our businesses understand that if we're not meeting this need, that they're gonna lose sales, that they're gonna lose potential customers, and the majority are going to go to a competitor site. And you can see from this statistic from Google's 2019 study that 61% of consumers who visited a mobile unfriendly site were likely to go to a competitor site. That's huge particularly for us as we're putting together marketing campaigns and we're spending client dollars uh, to put messages out on the internet, what we really need to understand is what does that experience look like? And what's the bad impact of a bad experience? Well, the answer is if expectations aren't met, then it could be very costly for our advertisers. Research is showing that if consumers are faced with an unfriendly site, not only are 61% likely to go to a competitor site instead, but 45% are likely to never visit that website again because of the poor experience. That's huge. Capturing someone's attention the first time is hard enough, but losing that attention and then trying to get it back is even harder. So in order to set ourselves up for success and set our customers up for success, before we launch any campaign, we have to know what the experience is like. So one of the things I'm gonna challenge everybody in the group on is think about the business that you put in the chat box. And let's be honest with ourselves. When you think about that business, how long has it been since you went to that customer's website? How long has it been since you explored that website as if you were a consumer? Has it been days? Has it been weeks? Has it not been since the start of the campaign? That's an area that I'd like for you guys to think through. When was the last time you navigated that site? How about put that in the chat box? Let's see what some answers are. It's time to be transparent, don't be shy. This week, since December, thank you, Lisa. It's been at least a week, eight days, three weeks ago. They don't have a website. It's one of the things we're discussing, very good. You know, it's not uncommon for us to make a sale, launch a campaign, um, and then move on with our lives. I think at times we forget to inspect. Um, and that's because we're working on new clients and then we're trying to make sure campaigns go well. There's nothing wrong with any of these answers. That's normal. What we are asking though is how do we get better? And what does that look like and what does that mean? So one of the things that uh, we found from a, the same Think with Google mobile experience study was that consumers are shifting their thinking from who does it best to who does it best right now. And I think that's really important. Fast mobile experiences are table stakes for businesses. Consumers are just not willing to make a trade-off between what a usable experience is and what a fast experience is. They demand that businesses are both. And we need to make sure that the businesses we're working with understand that. 30% of consumers expect one second or less page load time, while 18% expect the page to load instantly. So as you think about that, we're talking about nearly 50% of consumers want a page within less than a second or a second or less. That's a powerful number to think about. So one thing that we do want each of you to do is make a note of this. Make that mental note in those businesses we're talking about, run a page speed test for them. Let's look at what those numbers actually look like because this may be an area we need to talk about with some of those businesses and advise them how to improve that mobile, that mobile page speed. Now the next area we're gonna jump into is social distancing. Um, so this was an area that I, I think that we all need to think about and explore and not be afraid of. 
Uh, as we move forward and we're doing these digital academies over the next few weeks, and we're going to get into product. One area that I think we have to keep in mind is some of our world is going to change and it's going to look differently. That could potentially mean new technology coming out and disrupting the marketplace. Think about when Facebook came onto the scene and opened up uh, not just to college students, but in 2008 when they let everybody get on. Um, and the, the API was, was, you know, Gannett and Blink were the first API. Um, and the new ad serving platforms were established. Facebook is a part of our everyday lives now, or Instagram, social media. So disruption could potentially happen, and I think we need to be prepared for that and look at some of the scenarios. One of those is working remote. So thanks to uh, advances in high-speed internet um, and better teleconferencing technology, more and more people are transforming to their homes uh, from places where they eat, sleep, they make family memories. They're now turning those into work environments. Um, and, and more than ever, so 5 million employees now work from home at least half the time. Now this is before COVID-19 happened. Um, so one of the things that I think we need to be cognizant of is with, so prior to the pandemic, mobile searches for remote jobs had increased over 210% in the last two years. Um, but it's not just searches, it's the number of individuals who are actually working from home. What does that do to what our life looks like? How are people's habits going to change as more and more people are working from home? Is that going to have an impact on businesses? And if so, in what way? So a lot of us have experienced with businesses lately um, that they didn't have an e-commerce website. They don't manage their inventory in a way that would even allow that. How are we having conversations with these businesses to say, we may need to prepare for a different world in the future. People may not uh, have the same roots. More and more people may work from home, which means there may be less and less drop-offs at stores or, or drop-ins at stores on the way home from work. Um, you may have to make a special trip out for that now. And what does that do to what consumer behavior and marketing looks like? We don't know yet. And I think we need to pay close attention to that. 30% of people being, uh, value being able to choose their work location over an increase in vacation time. So that's very interesting. The primary driver here seems to be quality of life. Uh, they're looking for flexible workspace and 80% of workers in the US would choose a job that offered flexible working over a job that didn't. And that's powerful statistic that's driving up even outside of COVID and before this pandemic, it's driving up the desire for individuals to be at home and to have a better work-life balance, which is going to have an impact on how we do business. An example of that is groceries from the couch. So e-commerce is nothing new, right? But as more and more people are spending time at home, they're gonna have less and less shopping trips and these patterns across roads are gonna be changing as well. And we need to pay attention to that. So it's not just our delivery apps for groceries, it's across the board and how are we helping to prepare our clients get ready for a time when less and less people are driving by their stores and potentially it's a special trip for them to go out. So as we look forward, now that millions and millions of people are working from home out of necessity, um, ordering grocery and delivery or pickup because of health official guidelines and what's currently going on with COVID, consumer sentiment is likely to improve. So before the pandemic happened, and although e-commerce uh, was readily available, oftentimes what we saw is certain demographics were not apt to jump on board. They were not apt to automatically uh, start getting groceries delivered from their house or to their house. And part of that is, the sentiment around, well, I want to be able to pick out my own produce. I want to be able to touch and feel a loaf of bread and make sure that it's not stale. Um, they're different. I want to be the judge of quality. What's interesting is this pandemic may force individuals to have different habits that they get used to. And that's what we need to start evaluating. Those are areas we need to look at and we need to prepare our clients for conversations like this. So the challenge to you all is how will our business partners be set up for success? And that's really something that we want you to think through. So in the short term, 
marketers are definitely right now having to find out how we're going to meet the most basic needs. But in the long term, we may have to adapt to what this new normal looks like. One other area that I want to talk about is um, AR technology and style ideas in Google Lens. And mainly because this is really taking off right now. So it's not that this hasn't been uh, uh, available um, for the last year to two years, probably. Um, it's that now and now we need more and more to do uh, to have access to this. So as an example, uh, what you're seeing on the left is AR technology on YouTube. Now, this is also available in ad space on Facebook and Instagram. Um, but what it allows you to do essentially is you get this immersive 3D environment and your camera uh, has the ability to understand the world around you. So if you want to look at how a different shade of lipstick looks with your skin tone, you can do that. If you want to see what a different haircut or style looks like on your facial features, you can now do that through AR technology. In addition, you can also use Google Lens for different style ideas. So imagine being at a friend's house and you see an outfit that they're wearing. Or even better for someone like me, who you, everyone on this call probably knows about Maeve uh, and uh, the adorable little puppy in the Michaela household now. Um, what's really interesting is to be able to take a picture of a dog that you may see and say, what breed is that adorable little puppy? Well, Lens can put that answer in real world context for you and put it in front of you in a way that it's most useful. Very similar to this example they're showing where you could take a picture of an item and then be able to see, is there similar items at another store? Are there similar items near me? Maybe they're more cost effective. Maybe I like the color or the style better. Two and in three individuals are saying they're interested in harnessing AR to help them when shopping. These are trends that we need to stay on top of and be aware of because they could impact our future. Whoops. So here's your challenge. For the consumer or for the customer that you put in the chat at the beginning, this is a customer that we want you to carry through for the next few weeks of Digital Academy. And what we would like for each of you to do is inspect first. We want you to inspect creative that you currently are using. We want you to inspect the tactics and the client's website. Go over it as an account executive. Go over it as if you were a competitor of ours. Go over it as if you were on the post sales team. What are we doing well, but what are the gaps that we potentially have? How do we improve with our current customers with that particular customer that you put in the chat box? Then shop them. Shop their website as if you were that consumer. Shop them on the internet and see how they appear. If you are trying to find a particular product or service, can you do it? What does the experience on their website look like? Do you understand where to go once you're on the site? Can you figure out how to contact the business? Where to get information that you're looking for? We need to inspect to shop and then we need to provide feedback. We need to tell our customers ideas we need to help them during this time set themselves up for future success. We need to point out what the gaps are and then provide them solutions for filling that gap. And that doesn't mean that we have to sell them something, but it does mean that we need to advise and we need to consult with them. So this is your challenge. What we would like you to do is look through this client and by the end of the week, share the feedback that you've provided to this client with your manager. Show them the idea. If you're not sure what the gaps are, get with your CSM or pull in other teammates, reach out to myself, but let's do a full inspection of this business and let's look at how we can advise our clients on how to be better during this time so that when America opens up, when the doors of brick and mortar businesses are back out or back up and open and consumers are ready to buy and they're ready to get out of their houses, your clients are ready for them. All right, now we're gonna go into questions. So let me look. Connor, we have any questions in the chat box? We've had a quiet group so far, no questions yet. Okay. So we're gonna open it up for just a second. If there's any questions, 
uh, please either take yourself off mute or put it in the chat box. No? Okay. Well then, that is a wrap for today's Digital Academy. We're gonna let you guys go. This deck we're gonna load um, into to our YouTube channel. We'll get that link out to everybody who is on the call today and we appreciate you guys attending. And hopefully uh, we'll see you next Wednesday on Digital Academy. In that one, we're gonna focus on owned and operated, what's going on with our sites, uh, how has COVID-19 had an impact, and what are some different ad formats or even design formats within our site that we need to know about and updates we've made over the last year. So we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Uh, and if you have any questions, please reach out directly. Thanks, guys. Thank you.